Hey guys, in today's video we're going to be putting together this Kolb K8 Pi control board for the Pixel Light Show. This is going to be used as the main show controller, so we have our eight local ports, three long range expansion ports, we have our Sound Blaster audio for audio output. It's currently being run off of two different power supplies, so we have a 5 volt power supply that's directly powering the Raspberry Pi, then we have a 12 volt power supply that's connected to a relay that will control the local ports. Now, the reason I'm doing that is I don't want this power supply to be on all the time when this controller's on. I'm fine with this running more often than the power supply. Um, the relay I'm using is a Shelly power monitoring switch, a power mod. I'm using this Shelly PM power monitoring mini relay to control the main 12 volt power supply. The way this is being operated is once this show player starts playing a sequence, it will send out an MQTT uh, message to my home assistant server, which will then enable the power to be turned on on the switch, which will enable the power supply, which powers these, these local ports here. Stay tuned, let's get started with the build. All right, parts list for the build today. We're gonna have the main controller be a Raspberry Pi 4 that's gonna connect to our Kolb K8 Pixel Cape. I live in Arizona, so it's hot year round, so we're gonna definitely need a cooling fan on that Pi. In addition to the cooling fan, we have a couple different power supplies. The one that's going to control the LEDs is a meanwhile 12 volt power supply. And we have a 5 volt set power supply that's going to be powering the Raspberry Pi. In addition to that, our audio output is going to be done via the Sound Blaster card. We also will need some glands to pass our X-Connect wires through. These glands are going to help keep things watertight. And then finally, we need a case to house all of the objects into. In this case right here, is linked down in the description. I got it from Wired Watts. It was made for a Falcon controller, but in this video you'll see how we will adapt this to fit our needs. Now that we know the parts, let's get started. So like I mentioned in the intro, we have this plate that we got from Wired Watts that's made for another controller. What I've done is adapted it with a 3D printed part that takes the mounting hardware from the Falcon controller and adapts it to the Culp. For most of the components that we're installing today in the case, I do have them mounted on the adapter plate. I was able to match up the screw holes on all the devices and, and use standard 2.5 or 3 millimeter screws to be able to tie these all down. At one point I was going to use a relay to power off the main power supply for the LEDs, but that ended up not working. But what you see me here doing is tying down the 5 volt brick using cable ties to the one adapter plate. I picked up a pack of these threaded inserts from Amazon that are able to be pressed into the 3D printed part with a soldering iron. With the parts lined up, I hold the threaded insert with a pair of tweezers and I gently push them into the part and then once they're seated you slowly release and the soldering iron should back out pretty easily and leave the threaded insert in place. Before we screw everything down I'm going to make sure that I have a SD card with FUP installed and then I'm going to take the Culp cape and attach it to the Raspberry Pi with the 40 pin connector. Since I'm using two power supplies it's important that I have the jumper that connects the 12 volt power to the Raspberry Pi disconnected. After everything on the board is connected properly, let's get it screwed down into the mounting plate. The fan I'm using to cool the Raspberry Pi is powered by a USB, so I'm going to plug in one of the USB ports. On the fan, there's arrows pointing in the direction of airflow, and once I press that in, I'm making sure that the airflow is blowing over the device. We also need to remember to plug in our sound card as well as connect the 5 volt power supply to our Raspberry Pi. Now let's work on connecting our power supplies to mains voltage. 
please be careful whenever you're working with mains voltage as it can kill you. There's the block here. So, our lines to red, our ground is to yellow, and our neutral is to blue. The only other wire we have coming off of this is our positive and negative lead that are going to connect to our controller. So I'm going to get this all back in or back on the mounting plate and into the box and we'll show the wiring of the, the power leads. So for these particular glands that I have, they're the PG7s. I only use a half inch drill bit to push through on the eight holes that I need or nine holes that I need and this is the perfect size for these to screw into. So let's get these holes drilled. I have one final hole that's going to hold this half inch uh, gland and this is going to hold the power cable. So I'm going to put that hole on this side over here. So with that last hole drilled, let's go ahead and get all of our adapters pushed through these holes and tighten down. So to pass the wire through, I've taken off the nut from the one side of the gland. I'm gonna pass the power wires through the nut and then the power wires itself through the pass-through gland. Give that a little bit of help and lightly screw this down. Now I'm gonna take our wires and put them in the respective holes of the power distribution block. Make sure they're all the way in there, lock them down, give them a pull, make sure they don't come out. So that was our ground, our neutral. This is our ground. And finally, our live wire. So pushing that through and then locking it down. Now, since I know I don't have much space between here when I get the wire in, I'm gonna loosen this up, pull the excess wire through as I maneuver the plate into position of where it needs to go. Let's flip the power supply back over. With the way these glands work, just like the power cord, you take off one side of the nut, pass it over the wire before you push it through so that you can tie these down. For each of these connectors, if you look on the controller themselves, you can see what um, you can see the designation between ground, data, and voltage. With those designations in mind, let's get all the wires screwed into these terminals and attach them to the Culp controller. Going into the controller, the controller ports are port 1, port 2, port 3, port 4, port 5, port 6, port 7, port 8. And that corresponds with how they're coming out of the box here. Okay, now that we have the controller built, let's jump into X lights and show how the setup of the controller itself is handled. So on the left hand side, under the controller tab, you'll see add ethernet. I'm going to click that and you're going to see a controller set up here that we can go in and edit in this box on the right. So we know this is our Culp K8. Pi description. Let's say this is the show master. The vendor. Go in here. We know it's a Culp lights and then the model 
for this particular build we did the k8 pi no expansions i'm not going to touch any of these default port brightness i'm going to set to 30 percent default port gamma i'm going to leave at one these other options i'm not going to change the ip address so after you have set up fpp on the controller itself and get it onto your network you will be able to find the IP address we're gonna put the IP address of the of the controller in this box mine's 0.0.0.50 I'm gonna leave this one blank protocol DDP I'm going to put in a few models on the layout tab just so I can show how to map models on the controllers and upload the output of the controller from X lights to the FPP player. I'm going to import a stocking from Gilbert Engineering, a test line, and I'm just going to copy this test line a few times. Right, hit save. I'm going to go back into controllers. On the bottom right here, you should be able to see the word visualize. So once you click that, it's going to open up the port controller or the port visualizer for the given controller. And here are the models that we just added. And it's simply a dragging the models to the right port for the controller. Once that's done, I'm going to hit X. I'm going to hit save. Then after I hit save, I'm going to click open, and this should open the browser to the FPP player device. Now I'm going to switch back to X Lights and go upload output. You can see uploading outputs to controller on the bottom left. Once this is done, we should be able to go back to the FPP player. I'm going to hit refresh. If I go to input and output setup, go to channel outputs. Go to the K8 Pi, so this is the, the controller from Culp that we have on top of the Pi. You can see all of our models have now been mapped into FPP from x -Lights. I'm going to go ahead and start a new sequence. I'm just going to do an animation. Here are all of our models. We should be able to drop in effects to each of the models below. Hit render. Now that we've dropped in some effects on the models, I'm going to go ahead and click output. Once we click output the lights, we can hit play. And what we are going to do is verify that the way we set up FPP and X lights and output those connections to the controller is working correctly.